How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and teachers, and mothers, and fathers, and people, as I like to say? Which suggests that the stuff I do, I like that word stuff, the stuff I do, I am of the view, has some virtue for young and old, people of all ages, in all walks of life, and of all levels of schooling. Because why? Because they are just enchanting and dramatic things to contemplate. I'm Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And my business today has to do with vibrating bars and strings. Vibrating bars and vibrating strings. Vibrating bars and vibrating strings. So consider the following. I have a bar mounted on a hollow chamber, a resonating chamber, and I shall speak of resonance subsequently. This bar is so thick, so wide, so long, and made of certain stuff, steel. And it is mounted at, ver at two very important places, fixed right there. I'll represent that bar in cross view, so, and it is fixed there and fixed there. Very specially placed fixes. Now I'm going to strike that bar. Oh. Strike it. As I have already suggested, it is vibrating quite like that, but too fast, of course, to see. And it is vibrating 440 vibrations per second and emits what we call A. Although I'm led, led quickly to consider this, I think the European musical A is 426 or some such. You better check that. 440. Anyway. Now, here is another bar which one might view as absolutely identical with the first one. So we think, but they are not quite exactly alike. And how will I know? Let me strike this one. And quiet it. Let me strike this one. And quiet it. I assert that they are not quite identical. And it would take an ear possessed of perfect pitch, like Tchaikovsky or a Bach or a Beethoven or a Mozart. They could tell. I'm going to show you that they're not alike. Listen. They are out of, they differ in their frequency by one vibration per second. Here's 440. Here's 441. And therefore, every 440 vibrations, they are out of phase and create what we call acoustically a beat. This is a destructive interference. Now, I'm going to show you this in a better way. Here is a tuning fork, so fat, so long, it is a bar bent at the middle and fixed to a resonating chamber which is hollow, empty, no, 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 never empty, filled with air. The box is so long, very critical, because the box must have a length appropriately resonant to the frequency of the fork. This fork emits middle C. This fork emits middle C. Now I'm going to load the prong of one of these with a load which means that I give it more inertia. I make it fatter, heavier, more sluggish. Now listen. Listen again. Now I'm going to load it differently. Just slip that, that weight down further. differently. Change the beat frequency. Now, I said that this bar is vibrating in this special way, but so fast we can't see it. I want to show you that that is so. I have here a bar, happens to be a metal pipe. It is so long, and I'm going to fix it with my fingers at such a position, right there, 
and I'm going to strike it transversely right there and watch what it does. Let me do it better. Let's see if we can get it on the shadow. Little difficult. Let me take another bar. Little difficult to see this. Uh-huh. How is that best seen? I'll do it again. This position is at rest. Another symmetric position is at rest. I'm going to show you that I can take hold of the bar at those nodes without interfering with the motion of the bar. There it is, bar still vibrating. Let me take another one. I'm doing this because I think it's difficult to see this on the camera, but watch it. Oh, there, there, that's very clear. That's a good one. And if I was a little more, there it is, there it is, bar still vibrating in the manner of the 440 and 441. Now, if I grasp it anywhere else, it is damped out instantly. A good question to ask is this. Here is this bar, which I held here, and another node was symmetrically established, and the bar then vibrated quite like that. And the question I like to ask is, how much part of the bar is this distance here? Nearly everybody says one quarter the length of the bar, Professor. And this happens not to be right. I'm going to tell you what is right. It is 0.224 of the length of the bar, which is a very interesting thing for students to explore. Now, here I have some other tuning forks. <laughs> Notice I didn't know which one was singing. I had set it into oscillation. Here is one. They are in resonance. Identical pitches, identical frequencies. Indeed, I'm going to show you something very remarkable. Let me take these two. I'm going to strike this one and stop it, damp it. And listen carefully to the response of the other. Listen. Ah, uh, a little difficult. Ah, 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 some trouble. I know what the trouble is. Too loose a tabletop so that the energy is being taken up by the table rather than by the, uh, the, the, the resonating chamber there. But I shall return to this. Let me go to some vibrating systems. My musical sticks, musical sticks, look here. An array of sticks cut to certain length, cut to certain length, and I'm going to drop them successively. Listen. Now, I have to tell you a little story because it's quite enchanting. One of my colleagues, having an eye to giving me some headache and trouble, put a bar in there one day, unknown to me, and I came then to play them and you listen to the consequence. Hear that? Yeah, he fixed me by putting one in which was not, not quite tuned to the sequence of the others. Vibrating bars. Now, consider strings. Vibrating strings. I have here a metal sliver, a little electromagnet in here which is energized by the electric current so that this sliver is a driver of a string whose length I can change, whose tension I can change, but whose thickness or linear density is fixed. Now let me start this string vibrating. I plug in the little electromagnet. Now watch. I have a string of certain length. There we are. I have put it under certain tension. 
I wonder if I can improve that view of things there by maybe having a white card or a black card or something. Will that do better? That may do better. That may do better. Watch it. Ah, I'm having trouble. That, there we are. There's the fundamental of that string, which is so long, beautiful. Oh, fellas, you've got it okay. So long, so tight, under such tension. Now I'm going to change the tension. Huh. Now. Huh. Notice I'm having a little trouble. Well, that's, that's physics. Physics is sometimes trouble. Ah, there we are. There we are. Two loops. So for this string, this is the second harmonic or the first overtone. Let me change the tension now. Ah, uh -huh. three loops. Third harmonic. Uh, the second overtone. Let me see if I can get four loops. There we are. Four. No, no, three. I can't count too well. There's four. And notice how uniquely defined the nodes are, where the string is said to be at rest, but which is not quite true because some energy must pass through there, and hence there must be some motion. Let me get a very high harmonic, very high. Well, there are four loops. There I have, I think, five. And so, I'm getting a little tired because it calls for some energy keeping that string in proper tension. I want to show you now this business of resonance that I tried to show you on the forks but had some trouble with. Listen, I'm going to strike this fork, a bar, present it to this one, stop this one, and listen to this one. Listen, listen now. That one's going, but this one isn't. I want to do it again. And this is resonance, which is exactly what happens, of course, when your ear hears me. Certain pulses reach your ear, so many per second, put the eardrum into motion. It responds very acutely, sharply. This acoustic energy is delivered to the bones in the inner, inner ear and thence to the brain. So in the last analysis, you hear with your brain. And what you hear, of course, we hope, in the case of my utterances, possesses some meaning and some virtue. And I thank you for listening. I shall return another day.